Hey kids, today we're talking about the Yakuza, Japan's legal crime syndicates. In the interest of time, this video won't be as extensive as I would like, but there is a good video by a guy named Tapakapa that covers the general ancient and recent history of the Yakuza, as well as their current legal status. They don't steal, they just take from the rich, and the poor, and everybody in between, and keep it. The important part is that there were two groups that eventually formed into the modern Yakuza, gamblers, Bakuto, and street peddlers, Takiya. Gambling has pretty much always been illegal in Japan, but that didn't stop the Bakuto from traveling the land, scamming everyone they could. These guys would get full body, detailed tattoos and would often show them off while gambling. They became referred to as Yakuza, which is a reference to a losing hand in one of the card games they played, sort of equivalent to Snake Eyes. This name, Yakuza, and the tattooing, by virtue of being cool, has stuck with the modern Yakuza. The Tekia were street peddlers that often sold poor quality goods and engaged in extremely predatory business practices and early protection rackets. They were organized into an Oyabun Kobun system, which is exactly what the modern Yakuza use. Eventually, they became organized and powerful enough for these Oyabun to have last names and carry swords. This power allowed them to worm their way into Japanese society and government, and is a large part of the reason why Yakuza membership is not explicitly illegal. Another tradition they pull from their Tekia days is the practice of Yubitsume, a form of punishment, and a way for a Kobun to apologize to their Oyabun. The Kobun takes a knife and cuts the first digit off of their pinky finger. The severed digit is then kept and delivered to the boss as a gruesome reminder of the incident. This idea was originally to impair the Kobun from being able to wield a sword properly so that they would need to be protected and therefore supervised. Nowadays, the loss of the finger is a telltale sign of someone's connections to the underworld, meaning that some Akizakaza often have to get prosthetics to be able to be accepted into society. Already, we're beginning to see a criminal syndicate that is uniquely cultured. You'd think that the promotion of a new kingpin and a criminal gang would be a bit hush-hush so as to throw off law enforcement, but... If you can see through the 240p, here is Shinoda Kenichi being promoted to the Kumicho of the Yamaguchi Kumi, the highest rank of the largest family in all of Japan. That Tapakapa video has a great explanation as to why the Yakuza are so public, so let's talk about what they're doing now. I do need to mention that information on Yakuza activities in both the past and present is very limited. Usually when a gang boss, let's pick Al Chapo for example, is arrested, their assets get compromised and published so we know how much money they had, uh, how much drugs they had stockpiled, and there may even be some paper trails if we get really lucky. The thing with Yakuza is they rarely commit crimes personally and they very rarely get busted in that fashion, that El Chapo fashion. Most illegal operations that they profit from are operated by non-Yakuza that pay protection fees for permission to operate. If that operation gets shut down, the people involved get arrested, but not the Yakuza, due to Japan's interesting legal system. Objection! In America, we have RICO, the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, which, among other things, allows gang leaders to be tried for crimes that they ordered others to do, and was created to prosecute mafia groups. Japan has no such thing. So, every Yakuza case essentially exists in a legal bubble. Remember Shinoda? He's been to prison twice, but was never busted for being the biggest guy in the biggest crime family in the entire country. Because that's not a law in the books, that's not illegal. He was in prison for 13 years in the 70s for murdering a rival with a katana, and another 6 years for firearms charges. One of the biggest sources of information that's in English on the Yakuza comes from Jake Edelstein, an investigative journalist who is the only non-Japanese to be in the Tokyo Police Press Club. If you've ever read an article on Yakuza, odds are that it'll either be written by Jake or it'll heavily cite Jake. Here's one piece that's been the victim of severe regurgitated journalism entitled, This May Be the Most Dangerous and the Most Costly Photo in Japan. In the interest of time, I won't go into all the details, but here's the really important bits. This picture is Tanaka Hidetoshi the chief director of Japan University and the vice chairman of Japan's Olympic Committee. After all, they are hosting the 2020 Summer Olympics. And right next to him is that guy from earlier, Shinoda Kenichi, the top brass of the biggest family. For you. Here's Tanaka with another known Yamaguchi Gumi member. Here's Tanaka at a party celebrating a Yakuza promotion. While we're looking at pictures, here's Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, standing with known Yamaguchi Gumi member Nagamoto Ichu and Abe Shinzo, the current prime minister. <laughs> this photo doesn't really mean anything since Nagamoto had yet to become a convicted criminal. It's, it's just funny. Back to Tanaka. Remember how he's the vice chairman of the Olympic Commission? He's not the only one with ties to the Yakuza. In fact, I'm pretty sure the entire Olympic Commission is basically infested with the tattooed conman. What are they after? Uh, let's look up how much money Japan has spent on the 2020 Olympics. Almost 25 
billion dollars. From what I can tell, Yakuza are using labor kickbacks and similar schemes to skim a pretty cut of that $25 billion. Outside of the shadows, the Yakuza do a unique form of racketeering called Sulkaya, which involves purchasing enough stock in a company to be able to attend shareholder meetings and then proceeding to make the company look bad in front of their legitimate shareholders. This is used to intimidate large corporations in action, which either involves paying off the Sulkaya or some other form of cooperation on the part of the company. After a company begins to cooperate, the Sulkaya will then protect the company from rival Sulkaya by preventing them from doing the same, likely violently. Nowadays, Japan has criminalized more and more of the Yakuza's main revenue schemes and will eventually ensnare the Yakuza in a big legal web until a lack of members drives them into extinction, hopefully after some more cool games about them come out.